Well, hello everyone. This is Jason Cisco, and we are live on a Friday coming to you from the Church Triumphant 1030 Strawberry Road right here in Pasadena, Texas in the greater Houston area. We welcome you, whether you are from near or from far, whether you are from the United States or, or you're from beyond the sea, we welcome you. We're so thankful for our global community. We're thankful for our church community, for the Church Triumphant Network, for everybody that uh, is tied in to what God is doing here uh, at the Church Triumphant, to those that we do life with, that we get to see face-to-face -face every week. We love you and we welcome you. And for those that are connected to us uh, all across the United States, we're so thankful for you. For those that are consistently with us, so thankful to have you with us. And for those that watch on YouTube later or watch this broadcast later, we welcome you. Thank you so much for making Prayer Nation what it is today. I do have some major news that I'm going to be sharing with you uh, towards the end of this broadcast today of uh, some specific direction that God has given to me. And the strategic uh, operating of the Spirit right now, I have given a title today of strategic hiding. And I think it's very important for us to understand that there's more than one side. As I came up this morning, woke up this morning and began to pray and meditate and talk about the directive that God has given me. This is the message that he gave to apply the principle. So before we get into that, I want us to just open up our hearts. I want us to just be able to express our worship to the Almighty. I want us to call to our Father, which is in heaven, and acknowledge his greatness in our lives. And we welcome you. I'm seeing uh, more people coming in. Norway, God bless you. Uh, so glad to have you with us. All the nations that watch us, our friends in India, those in Africa, Europe, Asia, those who are uh, all across the United States, um, it's always great to have you with us. And uh, for those that were with me from the very first time, we said, welcome. Thank you for uh, understanding when others are joining. So uh, let's, to, no more uh, delay. I'm seeing uh, uh, United Air, uh, Arab Emirates joining with us, um, seeing Jordan coming in with us. God bless you. What a, what a joy to have you uh, with us. Corpus Christi, amen. God bless you. So let's pray together and let's just ask the Lord to bring us into alignment, uh, bring us into perfect rhythm, and to be able to hear clearly his voice. Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for what you are doing in 2022 and this year 5782 on the Jewish calendar. Father, we know that this is a full prophetic time and this is a strategic moment. And I'm asking you, Father, to help me to speak as an oracle of the Lord today. And I'm praying that you would align us with you. That not only are we praying the prayers that you want us to pray, but that, uh, and not only are you hearing our prayers, but Lord Jesus, that we are hearing the things that you want us to to hear from you. So many times, just as we pray, it can be just as we hear. We only pray about certain things and you want us to pray about other things. And sometimes we can only hear you around certain things when you want to talk to us about other things. So God, I pray that you would open up our scope today, the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. This is what you said in your word to know the love of God which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. We want all of your fullness, so that means that every dimension that is available, it must, uh, it must open to us. So Father, we want to obey the rules. We want to uh, submit ourselves to your principles. We want to operate in the, the laws of the Spirit. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus makes us free from the law of sin and death. So Father, today, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we just ask you, Father, that you would help us to live uh, with the, the proper focus, that we would have the eternal now, that you would help us, oh God, to, to have deep contentment in ourselves, that we would have the infinite here, that we can imagine ourselves being at our best, right where we are. 
Father, I pray that we would be in the center of one God and that that one God would be in the center of our whole life and that you would be centered in us and we would be centered in you so that we can come into that place of flow, that flow state, oh God, where anything is possible in the spirit. You said that you wanted us to abide in you and you wanted your words to abide in us. And so, Father, we could ask what we will and it would be done. When we get into that perfect spot, that, that, that perfect alignment and that perfect rhythm, that, that, one, that oneness with God, that centering, the center of one God, and then finally the one emotion of love, that all emotions are subject to the perfect love of God. Now let's take on the whole armor of God. We take our loins girt about with truth. We take on the breastplate of righteousness, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the Rima word of God. Now I want you to understand that I live by the principles that I teach and that I do not ask people to come under my spiritual authority as a lead pastor or in my other roles that God has given me in the fivefold ministry in which I have other pastors that I pastor. I have um, other ministries that uh, are under my covering um, and I give prophetic words sometimes to them or give direction to them. But I would not do that if I, I would not do it effectively for sure or with the total potential that I could operate in that, if I myself did not have a pastor and did not have spiritual authority and covering in my life. So that's one obvious example. Uh, Jesus said, uh, I am a man under authority. He, uh, the, uh, Jesus said to the man, uh, the, the Roman centurion, he, uh, he said, I've never seen faith like your faith. And the reason why is because he said, I'm a man under authority. I say to this man, go, and he goes. Wait a minute. I'm under authority, but I say, go, go. And he says, all you need to do, Jesus, is speak the word. So the law of faith coincides directly with the law of submission. The laws of faith and the supernatural, all these people that don't want accountability in their life, but want to be used in the prophetic, all these people that have graduated past anyone being able to talk to them but God, um, that is, that is erroneous. That is not from the Bible. Um, we see examples of strange, far, of strange fire with Aaron's sons. And God judged them and killed them. He literally killed them. In the New Testament, what we're seeing is the application is, is that God has no tolerance for that. Uh, he, he was angry because you tolerate that woman Jezebel who teaches something that's contrary, makes herself a prophetess, but she's not subject to anyone, and she teaches fornication and idolatry. You tolerate her. I don't tolerate her. I'm going to kill her, he says. And anyone that sleeps in her bed, I'm going to kill. I mean, God takes it really seriously because an offense against, an author against authority is an offense against God. You can sin and recover faster than you can uh, operate, try to operate in spiritual things outside of authority. Uh, you will suffer greater, greater loss. You can recover from it, but you will suffer greater loss. So this is the principle that God has always had. In Romans 13, let every soul be subject to the higher power, for the powers that be are ordained of God. This is why we pray for all who are in authority. It's important to God. It should be important to us. And I think if you're watching this broadcast, it is important to you. So I want to tell you, not only do I give prophetic words, I receive prophetic words. People have given me direction many times in my life, and they've given me correction many, many times in my life. And I am not above being uh, having words from God given to me or the need for me to be given words from the Lord. Now, it is my understanding that every word must be tested. And so I teach that every word uh, should be should be tested. We take it into the presence of God. We take it into the arena of how we know him and what he's already said to us and what his word has already explained to us about his nature. Um, and and then it a, a, a word from the Lord from someone is that they're seeing something that maybe we're not seeing well enough. And so when they say it, 
it becomes a confirmation to what God is already dealing with us about. This is how it's supposed to work. Uh, one of the principles that I taught you is 1 Corinthians 2, where it talks about that he which is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. I believe that's verse 14. 14, 15 of 1 Corinthians 2. Natural man receives not the things of the spirit for their spiritually discerned, but the spiritual man uh, or who is spiritually minded man, the spiritually, spiritually oriented man, uh, he judges all things. He himself is judged of no man. In other words, he doesn't need to be judged because God has already judged him. That the spirit of God becomes an objective truth within the man, though he would feel subjective about himself, the Holy Spirit acts so independently within him and so freely within the man that truth can be spoken to the man from the Holy Spirit and bring correction and adjustment without it being necessary for someone else to do that. The more mature you are, the less you depend upon others seeing your blind spots and telling them to you. It's hard to receive that way. You need to receive it, but it's hard. You got to go to prayer. You have to navigate through whether you're offended or not. And then once you get to the kernel of what they're saying, you find the truth, and then that truth helps you grow. So once you deal with that on a larger scale in your life, until all the big rocks in the garden are taken away, usually it's pebbles, it's smaller things that you're not seeing that well because the big things have been clarified. Judge, it, uh, judge not lest you be judged. But he also says, first, take the plank out of your eye. Then you can see to take the moat out of your brother's eye. He doesn't say, I don't want you to see or I don't want you to discern. He said, I don't want you to judge while you're still not self-aware. So when the first take the plank out, let the Holy Spirit talk to you about you. And so after that happens, then you're able to see better to help somebody else. And you have a totally different attitude and mentality. So these are just principles that I've lived by and that I'm, I'm trying to explain just as a foundation for you, as a teaching moment, as I come into this, uh, this word from the Lord. I received a word from the Lord on Saturday that was in some ways an arresting word. And yet in other ways, it was something that as soon as I went into the presence of God and talked to God about it, I realized that um, I needed to pay more close attention to what he had already been saying to me. And so uh, I believe that this is a period of time in which God is redirecting us and we must pause everything in our lives to listen to God. He told me in 2022 that this would be the time when he was giving us the last great vision for the end times. He said, the vision that I'm giving in this coming year, and he was talking about coming into 2022, when I was to speak to the church, what he's already done started in me in 5782. And this year, this Jewish year, my, my surgery on my eyes happened in November. And that's when he really started talking to me and telling me that in January, I would be giving this to the church and I would be explaining it. He was bringing me through a process. And the process that I was going through was a parable and that this was a parable to bring truth to our local church, truth to me, and truth to the greater, uh, larger body of Christ. A part of that is he said that I must be okay with a period of time in which there was not a lot of harvest, there was not a lot of spiritual activity, but there, it was essential that there would be stillness. There would be stillness. When I went in for my surgery, they knew that in order for them to do what they needed to do, I had to be awake, but I could not move. I had to be still. So I, I taught a little bit about this right after I came out of my surgery. But as we're coming into this new year, this is now a much deeper, stronger corporate word that I'm giving to the church, is that this is a time to be still. It is a time to let the Holy Spirit help us not to be anxious for anything, but to embrace this period of peace because God needs us to be awake. We need to be very alert. We need to be able to listen. He said, we want you awake. We're not going to put you to sleep because we may need you to do something and I need you to be able to respond to my voice. And this is what God was saying to me is that I need you to be able to be awake and respond to my voice, but I need you to be in this moment right now 
not thinking about something else. I need you to be in this moment. I'm doing a major surgery. I'm giving you fresh vision. And you're going to have this vision the rest of your life. I had my last appointment on uh, Thursday. So I had the day after appointment. I had the week appointment. Um, I did it for both eyes. And then they gave me drops for the swelling and steroids and you know all of these things. My drops were finished uh, just before Christmas. And um, I'm adjusting myself. My brain is still learning how to read the lens better. And, but what you notice is three major things. There are three focal points. And so God is saying that he's adjusting our focus. He's wanting us to be focused. So my last appointment, I asked a lot more questions this time. And I will share this message with our, with our church, Church Triumphant family. We'll be talking about this, God willing, on Sunday. Uh, for the next, actually, two weeks, I'll be talking about this. But... The, the point is I have finished all of those all of those meetings, those checkups. I'm at uh, now I'm just back to a year and I'm back with my former doctor. Um, the surgery center is finished with me. So at the end of this, I have an understanding. I have a revelation knowledge. I have I have peace. I've come through the process. Now we're going to spiritually go through this process. So what the word of the Lord to me, uh, was, uh, and I wrote this down, I wrote this down too, is that this is a Shemitah year. So Shemitah year is a Sabbath year. What does that mean? It's a year of rest, resting the land. And it's also a dealing with the roots, digging up all the roots of, of things that were sapping energy. Uh, all, when, you're, when you're dealing with the, with, with the harvest, you're always dealing with the present harvest and you you know that the tares are there, but you don't have time to deal with them. So you deal with tares at the same time you deal with harvest. But in the Shemitah year, you deal with the roots of any uh, of the weeds that are in your field. You deal with it. So God does deep dive resets during that year. He blesses financially so that they are able to be able to be sustained through that time. He covers it. He protects it because Sabbath is a rhythm for him. And the Lord told me this as I began the year. I want you to learn the rhythm of Sabbath, the rhythm of rest. I want you to learn that. He said, you try to bunch it all up and just do rest, 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 rest. And then you work, 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 work. And he said, I want you to get into a rhythm of rest and work and rest and work. He said, that's one of my 10 commandments. Remember the Sabbath. And, and he reminded me that, you know, thou shalt not commit adultery is still heeded. Honor thy father and thy mother is still heeded. Why have we neglected the Sabbath? This is a year of getting ourselves in rhythm, getting ourselves in rhythm with God's time, with God's word, we know there are things that are coming. There are things that are going to happen, perhaps this year, and we feel especially for 2023 that there's going to be a lot of chaos. We must be prepared. And so the word that I received was that this would be a time for me to go away and hear from God, that this was a season that I was to stop everything and that God was going to speak to me and give me more direction. And um, a follow-up word to that was that God was wanting to put me in a space like he did with Elijah, where Elijah was alone with God in a, in a, in a hiding place. And this would be a preparation for me to have the Elisha in my life, the, the Elisha spirit to be cultivated, the double portion uh, for me to cultivate that uh, in my life. And so I was to listen, I was to wait and let the timing of the Lord unfold. So here is my response to that. So I take that and I, and I pray about this. And I say, now, wait a minute, Lord, isn't hiding wrong? Why would I be hiding? I just preached a message you gave me about Judges 6, where they were hiding from the enemy 
They went and hid in the dens that are in the mountains and the caves and the strongholds. And the Lord said to me, go back to the text. He said, not all hiding is the same. He said, sometimes there is strategic hiding. And the hiding that I'm talking about is not hiding based on fear. It is not hiding based on a reaction. It is a strategic move that I don't show everybody everything all the time. So watch what he did. The Bible says that Gideon did what? What was the first thing he did? The Bible says that Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to do what? To hide it from the Midianites. So there were people hiding in the dens, but then there was somebody else who was not operating in fear, who was actually rewarded for what he did, actually had an angel appear to him in his hiding space, actually got new identity, fresh direction, and able to marshal an army to go and defeat the Midianites after what happened here in this secret place. So all hiding is not for the same reasons. Some is motivated by flesh. Some hiding is motivated by emotion. Some, emo some hiding is we hide something because we're ashamed, because it's sin. Some hiding we do is because we're not wanting to make the, make the commitment. Uh, Jonah wants a relationship with God, but he's going to go hide in a boat. He's going to go uh, get down to the bottom of the boat. He's going to go put his hat on and go on vacation. Okay, I'm going to go hide. I'm going to go run away. Some people hide because uh, the, the battle is too intense for them. The enemy has been on their, on their tails and they don't want to fight anymore. But there are some times when hiding is a strategic execution of the will of God. And that's what this is. That's what this is. God is calling for a time for us to go away and be with him. God is calling for a time for us to allow us to hear his voice. I will explain more as we go, but I want to show you this first thing. He hid it from the Midianites. There's a place where the enemy can't see, where the enemy cannot access, where the angels can come, where there, is, there, there are no precedents, there are, there's no traditions, there's no preconceived ideas, there's no limitations. That's what the, the fasting and prayer is about right now. The angel of the Lord appeared in the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And then he has this massive conversation, this great experience with God. And then after that, what does he do? He, when he perceives, the Bible says, verse 22, he perceived that he was an angel of the Lord. Gideon said, oh Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. He's like, I'm going to die. No, what happened? The angel is gone but he's still hearing God. That's what, that was the output of this, is that after the experience is gone, you're now in the flow of hearing God and you can have a totally different lifestyle now by a different identity and by being able to hear God clearly consistently. So what does he do to seal it? He built an altar in verse 24 and he called it Jehovah Shalom, or if you read it in Hebrew, it'd be Yahovah. It's the Tetragrammaton, which we now know what the vowel notes are. It's Yehovah, Yehovah Shalom, unto this day. So it's his own personal revelation. So God is wanting to give each one of us, and I spent a lot of time on Tuesday talking to you about how to write your own uh, prayer agenda. And I'm feeling much more of this same stream uh, that whatever agenda that I give should be very simple because God is wanting us now to rely upon his spirit, is that if I've got you to the place where you can hear his voice for yourself, my role is done. I must decrease, he must increase in your life. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, take thy father's young bullock. Now it came to pass the same night that the Lord said, okay, so God is still speaking to him. And what does he do? The Bible says that he tells him to throw down the altar of Baal, and cut down the grove. And he says, verse 27, And Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as the Lord had said unto him. And it was so, because he feared his father's household and the men of the city, that he could not do it by day, that he did it by night. So even because he knew there would be a reaction if he did it in broad daylight, 
He did it at night. It was a, it was strategic. God spoke to him at night and he was obedient that very night. God spoke to him at night because that's when he wanted him to do it. And so there are some things that are in the open. There are some things that are huge transparency. I was telling you about Jesus moving them from fishing in the shadows to fishing in the afternoon in the deep. Uh, the light shining and the flipping of the scenario and us changing the whole strategy of how we fish, okay? But there are also parts of this, parts of how God operates with us. That's what, there are so many different elements and layers of how God works that there's a, there are seasons when God hides us away so that we can do the work. This was, he feared them stopping him from doing the will of God. So the strategy is we do it at night. And once it's done, early in the morning, we'll face whatever we have to face. We will not run away from the people. He did not run away. And uh, his father stood up for him and protected him. And the next thing that you see, the Bible says, verse number 33, then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the East were gathered together and went over and pitched in the Valley of Jezreel. But the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew a trumpet. So I believe that there is a period of time where God wants us to be hidden away with him. And then he wants us to do some altar tearing down spiritual warfare that's not done on social media. But some altar working, uh, altar destroying, bail destroying, grove cutting down spiritual warfare. Uh, that he can speak to us about so that when the new day comes, as this new day comes and the enemy comes up against, the, the battle is coming. There is a massive battle that's coming that then everything has been prepared in our homes and in our hearts. We're hearing God completely. And then now that the spirit of the Lord can come upon Gideon and he blew a trumpet and Ebiezer was gathered after him and he sent messengers throughout all. Now it's in the open. He's sending messengers to all the tribes. And now there's confirmations. If thou will save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said, give me a confirmation. So I need confirmation, Lord, about this. So now he's back into this, making sure that every step that he takes is ordained of God. But the Spirit of the Lord comes upon him. There's a moment where the Spirit of the Lord is going to come upon the body of Christ. And we are going to go into intense spiritual warfare. But what we are dealing with now is a season where God can speak to us, change our identity, and help us to be known in hell. He also received an identity from those who were the Baal worshipers. They called him Jerub, Jerubbaal, which means let Baal contend. And they, they basically said, this man had the audacity to stand up against Baal. Let's see what happens with him. He got an identity as one who was not afraid to deal with the devil. And so hell will know us. Hell will know us. This is what God's desire is. So in every stage of great transition, of great breakthroughs, there's always a period of stillness, of going up into the mountain, and hearing from God. Every great transition has it. And so this is what God is calling for with the church. Let me give you one more strategy. I want to show you this. There are several that the Lord gave me um, as examples, but I feel like this one I have already taught about, and I'm coming back around to it to show you again how amazing God is in his timing. So God will give you a pattern. Uh, you'll understand it and learn the pattern and part of it will apply. Other parts will be for later or the fullness of it may be for later. You might do it with a small group of people and then God enlarges it and you do it with a greater group. And then you might again do it with the whole body of Christ. So it just depends on how grace is being established in your life and the lives of those that he has sent you to. But in 2 Samuel 6, we receive this uh, word from the Lord. This was the closeout word from Brother Winslow. This is something that I've been teaching for years. The restoration of the ark of the Lord. The restoration of the presence of God. And what that represents. And Obed-Edom in his house. Okay, we go on with this. 
But if you continue on this, uh, on this story, you'll notice that, that there was a strategic shift in David right before all these things happened. There was a big strategic shift in 2 Samuel chapter 5. I want to show you there were two ways of war here. There was the breaking forth of God when they were in the Valley of Rephaim. And then after that, the Bible says they collected the images and David and his men burned them. In verse 22, and the Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves in the Valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, notice, thou shalt not go up. So in the first battle, he said, here is the enemy coming up against you. He went down to the cave of Adullam. He went back to his consecration. He went back to his place of first hearing God. He went back to his place of promises. And from the wealth of all he had learned in those many years of running from Saul and all of those years of writing psalms and adversity, now he's got adversity again. He writes another psalm. God speaks to him. They go out into the battle. First time he's had this kind of unity in his life. And through the unity of the people, the anointing of the people, mixing with the anointing that was upon the man of God, there was a breakthrough. There was something that had been waiting for a long time that was now gushing forth. 22 years and six months, he had been waiting for that breakthrough. This is what we had in this first wave. This first big surge of the body of Christ has been a breaking forth of God. It has been something that it has been building up for decades where God is now releasing something in the earth and we're feeling that and we pushed back the enemy. Now we see the enemy re-engaging, coming back and we know that there's a battle that's coming again. And what does God say? No, you shall not go up. So this is the word of the Lord for us right now. It's strategic. It's not time to go up, not time to do that. But he says, but what, what are you supposed to do? Fetch a compass behind them. Fetch a compass behind them. It says here to turn about, around, aside, or back, or towards. To, to bro be brought around, to march around, go partly around, circle about, skirt. Okay, in the nifal which is another verb tense, it is to turn oneself, to be turned over to, to encompass. Okay, in the in Peol, in Hifel, it is to cause to turn. You see this, to go around to encompass. Hafel, these are all verb tenses. So you get the idea. He says, don't let them see you. Go around behind. But I'm going to put you in a strategic position where they cannot see you, but you can see them. And then what does he say? But let it be when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt bestir thyself, for then the Lord shall go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. So in the first response, in the first battle, it's intense. The first battle is uh, it, 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 it's of necessity. It's defending your ground. It's reestablishing your authority. It's saying, you're not coming in here. It's saying, it's saying, not on my watch. And God breaking through and standing with them. It was essential. It, they had to do this. They were, they were pressed. But he says, when you do it this time, I don't want you to be stressed. And so God wants us in this time period. He wants us to be, and in, and in all of these times, uh, if you'll notice, even in 57, uh, 81, there was a, uh, a, a, a element of Sabbath that was in that. So in all of these times, there's, there's different prophetic applications of getting in alignment and resting. And he said, look, nope, you're not going up. Trust me on this one. You're not going to do traditional warfare. You're going to do a different kind of warfare. I want you to just wait on me. I want you to go slow and go around behind. And I want you to wait. And he says, wait, wait till you hear the sound of a going. It was the sound of the angels in the trees that there was going to be an alignment with the angelic that we don't go until God says go. Not until the angel armies are sent. When heaven says yes, then you say yes. When in heaven says go, you say go. But right now, I just want you to compass around behind them where you can see where they are. 
and they can't see you. It's strategic hiding. And in the strategic hiding, it allows you to rest, not be stressed. There's no elements of surprise. And it's so you can listen and you can hear. And so now the Bible says David did so. And as the Lord, as the Lord had commanded him, and he smote the Philistine, the Philistines from Geba until they'll come to Gezer. And then the Bible says, now David gathers together and they bring the ark back. Next page. No more Philistines. Philistines are gone. Now it's about the glory of God coming in. Now it's about total restoration. Now it's about God setting things in order. Now, now it's, it, it, it's expanding the territory. No more Philistines. So th this is a huge shift that God is wanting to do in the body of Christ. And he's wanting us to have a total different outlook, a total different focus. And so that means we have to stop. And that means for me, I have to stop. And what the Lord said to me is that you have to know when something is done and you have to know when to finish something so that I can do the other bigger things that I've been wanting to do with you. And so I received it as from the Lord. I understood it and the Lord's continual voice speaking to me uh, around this, uh, I, uh, I say as from the Lord, I received it from the Lord. And so I'm going to be taking a space to reevaluate again and to listen to God. We will not be doing uh, Facebook Live. We will not be doing uh, YouTube Live. Uh, and I don't know how long this is. It could be weeks. It could be months. But there are other initiatives. And I want to tell you some of the bigger, larger goals that God has given to me. So I know that I'm supposed to write. This year, I have to produce some written material. Um, and God has given me a directive to write three books on the, um, the prayer initiatives for the body of Christ. So what are those prayer initiatives? Visitation, transformation, and uh, multiplication. So I am starting on my visitation book right now. And I, I have to dedicate some time for this, some unbroken, uh, do not disturb time where I can hear God and I can uh, be able to speak uh, in print what God is wanting for a larger uh, scope, for a larger um, ability to influence, that this can be a roadmap for the body of Christ. Uh, that's one thing I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to write. Secondly, we're going to reconfigure how we do our technology. And we may come back to doing some prayer broadcasts. Um, I, I have not ceased to be called uh, to a global ministry of prayer. That's not gone away. That's not what this is. This is compassing about to be better positioned to win a more thorough victory. What this is, is about us being in a place of rest and stillness and being able to get direction from the Lord and I can't be doing, doing, doing and giving output, output, output. And the Lord said to me, everything I tell you is not for everyone. And so he said, there's going to be specific words that I'm going to give. I'm going to be directed to give specific messages. I've been asked to, uh, to uh, speak to 29 regions um, of, of young people that are detained. Thousands of young people. They have exclusively want us to be their virtual church. Um, and I will have to have a translator for this. So there are, there are so many things that God is doing right now. I have to listen very carefully. People want me on their radio programs. They want me, uh, people have asked me to be on television. I have to hear from God and I have to be able to reconfigure this the way he wants it right now so that we can be strategic. So when the time is right, when the spirit of the Lord comes upon us, all we have to do is push a button and the entire prayer nation lights up and we go into war. We know how to get our directives. We know how to join together in prayer. We know how to connect with each other. I want to build some really cool technology for the future. I don't even know how to do that yet. I want to build a prayer nation app that will allow us to input whatever nation that you are in. Uh, you can be able to input prophetic words and also give us strategic prayer points for your region and for your nation. We want to be able to have an Alpha Prayer, an Alpha Cities Prayer uh, network. We want to be able to have 24-hour prayer. This is a lot of infrastructure, and I'm going to need help to do this. 
So I'm also going to need a very specific plan. God has also talked to me about a school of the spirit, a training center. These are things that are very big um, uh, agenda items, learning, uh, learning Hebrew, different things. These are all essential for where God is taking us. So I have to have some, some unbroken time to be with God, to be alone with God, to hear his voice, to be renewed, to be refreshed, and to allow God to bring all the people around me that he needs me for. Now, what we're hoping to do while we're building these bigger plans out, this is what he wanted to give, wanted me to give you so that you're not, for those of you that have been consistently with me um, and have depended upon this program in some way or another for uh, guidance, encouragement, or help, or community, because many people are the same that are communicating with each other. I do want to put together a podcast. With podcasting, I can reach more platforms, um, and I can also post it as we have it ready. So that gives me some versatility for unbroken periods of time for me to write, for me to listen, for me to pray, for me to have meetings, for me to do specific things with people as I'm sent out to do them. So it also gives me some time to calibrate um, all of the, of the uh, equations. So my, my new technology that I have, it still has some quirks in it. It's not really designed uh, as it is right now for live or not really, it's not really perfect for live. Um, but what, we're, what we have, what we're building is actually for something so much better for a whole studio effect. So once we get the podcast element fixed, and we get all those details, we're going to be able to codify. Many of you have asked, what was that message that you preached? Oh, what was that thing? No, there was that one that you did. And the, I get messages like this. Uh, do you know which one that was? I want to go back. So we want to take some time to go back to all the, all the things that God's already given us. And we want to take some of those components and we may just take those clips and just post those specific clips and say, but here's a subject. So you'll be able to have a podcast that says seven spirits of God, seven dimensions of God, gifts of the spirit, fivefold ministry, uh, praying through the book of Ephesians, praying the halal, okay? Uh, different, different, there'll be sections and we'll be able to post those as podcasts that can be video or audio. So this is our goal of what we wanna do. And we feel like that this is gonna be, this is gonna allow us to really um, expand. Uh, it can be, it's a lot easier to share. Uh, they can be broken down into smaller bites. And then when we do live things, they'll be very focused. It'll be very specific. God will say, I want you to go and do this live. And this is what we're going to be praying about. We'll post it in advance. We'll let you know. And, and then we'll, we'll all know what we're doing. And we'll be doing praying and ministering. Uh, instead of me doing more teaching, it'll be less teaching. It'll be more prophetic words, more apostolic directives. It'll be more specifically going after things. It'll be the spirit of the Lord coming upon us, the trumpet of God, uh, marshalling the troops and saying, this is what we're going after for the next 24 hours. We're going to hit this. I want every network. I want every person at every time zone. We're going to pray this. And this is what God is saying. Okay. So this is what, this is what I'm wanting to do. This is what the directive of the Lord is for me, but it's going to take some time for me to do this. So there's going to be some space. Uh, where I'm not going to be on the air and there's not going to be a podcast. But when we do, we will present it to you. And I want to say thank you. Uh, thank you for those that have done things like this for me. This is a, a Prayer Nation mug. It's really cool. Um, we have a great concept now for a logo for our for our um, podcast from this. Um, it's it's really neat. When you see it up close, uh, it shows the nations of the world like through a, through a glass um, and it allows you kind of to toggle in uh, whichever one you're wanting to pray for right now. God wants us to pray uh, as, as prayer nation. He wants there to literally be um, people in every nation with a whole interwoven network of people praying and focusing in on these uh, initiatives so that we could have intercessors could pull out an iPad or a, an iPhone or a Samsung, whatever device, and you could download this app, you could hold it out, and you could just see only thing that happens here is just people being able to um, give a prophetic word, hear a prophetic word, leave a prayer request, uh, say, I prayed for you today. This is what I felt when I prayed. 
Uh, so I think this would be awesome, uh, awesome things that are beyond what, beyond what I can physically do. I don't have the tech myself, but I've talked to some people that know it. It's still in the very infant stages. But I'm believing that God is going to assemble that and as he wants it to be done in rest, not in stress. Does that make sense? He wants it to be done in rest and not in stress. There's one final reason, and that is because it's strategic. I believe that God is wanting us to uh, be prepared as a church. And some of those things um, are, are through different types of communication streams. And so um, Facebook may not be the only place where we need to be. We may need to be in different places. And we might need to create our own way of communicating that cannot be censored, that cannot be uh, blocked, um, and it can get straight to where people are. So we are, <coughs> we are going to take a hiatus from this for a season. And I want to just again say thank you for your time of being with me uh, over these almost last two years of Prayer Nation in this format as it's been. Every day, and then last year when I was in the mountains, the Lord switched it to Tuesdays and Fridays. Now we're coming into 2022. He said, I want you to stop and rest again, and I want to talk to you. So this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to obey God. I love you. Uh, God bless you. Thank you so much. And remember, don't live in the shadows, but stand in the light because with Jesus, it's always high noon.